at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show here in Las Vegas. And I have to say this year, after a few years now, it feels like CES is just back to its normal controlled chaos self. But for the second year in a row, I went to visit Abbott's booth here at the show. Yes, the maker of the popular COVID at home tests and the first ever health tech company to host a keynote at CES last year. Now I partnered with them for this video because they make some super helpful and interesting technologies. And there's one technology in particular that I think it's super important we talk about in this decoder episode. And it's this, the iStat TBI plasma test. It's the first rapid hand handheld blood plasma test to help objectively assess concussions, which is actually a huge deal. Yeah, purple's a way better color. So first, what is a concussion and why is it so important to diagnose it as soon as possible? So normally the brain sits in what's called cerebrospinal fluid, which is a fluid that flows in and around the brain and spinal cord to provide nutrients and also cushion them from injury. Now most movements we do, the brain just sort of floats around in there and it's fine. A concussion, however, is when we either take a blow to the head or body, or even through quick movement of the head in the case of whiplash, and the brain gets jolted, potentially bumping up against our skull or even twisting unnaturally. Now most concussions are mild ones as compared to the more rare, very severe ones, but even mild ones when left undiagnosed can cause problems because the brain is super sensitive to any other trauma that happens within a short period after that concussion. Think of it like spraining your ankle. If you saw that your ankle was sprained, you wouldn't just go for a run because you know that would just make things worse. And it's the same with the brain. The issue is, unlike the swollen ankle that you might get from the sprain that you can clearly see, the brain injury much harder to notice. Just ask Kevin Pierce, a former Olympic snowboarder whose career was ended after a concussion and has since become a huge health brain advocate starting the Love Your Brain nonprofit foundation. I got a concussion at the first Olympic qualifier and this kind of is unknown about me because I hit it. And that's one thing that you can do with a concussion is you can hide it. You don't always have to, unlike a broken bone or anything else you injured, you don't always have to let people know when you hit your head. And I was able to hide that concussion and symptoms weren't too bad and I felt fine. And then it was a week and a half later that I ultimately had the crash that immediately ended my snowboard career forever. Essentially, Kevin got a concussion and then when he hit his head too soon after that first concussion, it led to a much worse condition requiring Kevin to have to relearn to talk, walk, and of course, ending his career as a snowboarder. And the truth is concussions are often talked about in conjunction with sports, but something like 3% happen during sports, leaving the other 97% happening outside of that and mainly from just slips and falls. And contrary to popular belief, women tend to have a higher rate of concussion and tend to have higher post-concussive symptoms, which is related to their brains having relatively more connections that are just more fragile. And the rate of concussion in high school female soccer is the same as high school male football. Bottom line, concussions don't just happen to a specific small demographic that we usually think they happen to. And that brings us to why this test is so important. Now normally when someone is suspected of having a concussion, they are evaluated with what is called the Glasgow Coma Scale. Essentially, they are asked a series of questions or given commands, and based on the responses, they're giving a score. And depending on how the patient did, they can then be recommended for a CT scan or further evaluation. Now there are some obvious complications with this method not knowing the baseline of the patient before they came in, them not showing symptoms just yet, even in the cases of some athletes, and like Kevin said, actively hiding their symptoms because they falsely believe that they can just go back to their sport. Then the CT scan, it tends to look for hemorrhaging or bleeding in the brain, and not all traumatic brain injuries involve bleeding. And actually a study in 2019 found that the iStat TBI plasma test was able to detect traumatic brain injuries even when a CT scan was normal. So how does this test work? Well, it all starts with this tiny cartridge here. 
Blood is drawn from the patient and two drops of plasma go into the cartridge. The cartridge is then inserted into the iStat Alinity instrument, and before the instrument does anything, the first part of the process is already starting. Next, the iStat Alinity instrument pushes a small pump on the cartridge, which pushes the plasma sample out of the first chamber and through the rest of the cartridge chambers until it reaches a control biosensor chamber. Then a second set of two sensors, which also contain antibodies, but this time ones that attach to two proteins called GFAP or glial fibrillary acidic protein and UCHL1 or ubiquitin carboxyl terminal hydrolase L1. While these two proteins are found in our bloodstream in small quantities, they're mostly found in our brains. And the idea here is that when a traumatic brain injury occurs, they get released from the brain into the blood and become a very good indication that a concussion may have occurred. So now that the antibodies have attached to these two proteins, and there's one sensor for each of the proteins, by the way, the isatolinity instrument then sends a small electrical current through the sensor which are impedance sensors. So basically, when those antibodies attach to the GFAP and the UCHL1 proteins, chemical reactions occur. And when they do, the impedance or the effective resistance of the electrical current changes from what it normally would be. The instrument uses a specific frequency it knows that is altered by the specific protein chemical change and can then measure how much it changes by. It then uses Abbott's own algorithms to determine exactly how much of those proteins are present in the sample. And if GFAP levels are above 30 picograms per milliliter and the UCHL1 levels are above 360 picograms per milliliter, then it signals on the device that these are elevated. And the physician can then use that to objectively decide if a CT scan or other techniques should be used next, and all of this happens in about 15 minutes. How clever is that, right? And of course, besides this test with such a huge global research team that Abbott has, they have a ton of other really cool technologies here at this booth, like this Infinity DBS system, which was the first directional DBS system approved for all major targets used to treat Parkinson's and essential tremor. It basically sends electrical impulses to the brain to stop tremors for people with Parkinson's disease just by having a physician program the device. Or we have their next generation continuous glucose monitor called the Freestyle Libra 3. It's now the smallest and thinnest wearable continuous glucose glucose monitor in the world at the size of just two stacked pennies. And it can still send minute by minute glucose readings to the wearer's compatible smartphone so that they can make informed diabetes treatment decisions. And then we have this Cardio MEMS HF system here that includes a small sensor the size of a paperclip that once placed in the pulmonary artery using a minimally invasive procedure, monitors for pressure changes and presents that data remotely to the patient's physician and then can be used to indicate worsening heart failure even before the patient might feel symptoms so that they can make changes to their treatment to combat it. How crazy is all this? Right? Okay, hope you guys learned something from this Dakota episode. I definitely did. I, it was fascinating to talk to the people at Abbott, the scientists behind a lot of the research and a lot of the stuff that goes into these products. It's just, it's just very cool, if I'm honest. Uh, but you guys, let me know what you thought of the tech in this video, of the video itself. Always appreciate the feedback. Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, shout out again to Abbott for helping me make this video. You can check out what other cool things they're up to at the link below. And now it is the end of a very hectic CES, it feels like. And I am just, I'm exhausted. So, good night, everybody.